Hi guys, today we'll be discussing the 13 most repeated topics in chemistry jam exam and the things you need to know about these 13 repeated topics in order to have a very high score in your jam exam. And when I say a very high score, I don't mean any type of a score. I mean scores like 80 and above in your chemistry jam exam. And this is not coming from just anybody, but this is coming from somebody who had 92 in chemistry jam exam. If you are new to my channel, my name is Max and I'm a second year medical student of Lagos State University College of Medicine. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So let's get right into the video. Normally, there are about 18 topics in the jam syllabus. But under these 18 topics, there are other topics embedded in other topics, which means that there are over 20 topics in the jam syllabus. But the listed is as 18. So the first topic you should know is separation, separation techniques, compounds, and mixtures. And the things you need to know about this particular topic is mixture, the meaning of mixture, the meaning of separation techniques and the meaning of compounds. So the first thing is you need to know the difference between pure substances and impure substances, right? Pure substances have sharp melting and boiling points, while impure substances have a very wide range of boiling points or melting points. That is something you should know. And you should know that compounds are usually pure substances. For example, now let us use the water molecule as an example. The water molecule contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. These three atoms are bonded together via a covalent bond, right? So this is a compound and it is a pure substance because it has a sharp boiling point. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Another thing you need to know is to know the differences between a compound and a mixture. You should know that a mixture is the combination of different elements that are physically combined together. You understand? why compounds are chemically combined together you should also know that compounds cannot be easily separated by any ordinary physical process also you should know the three basic phases of matter you should know that the phases of matter for O level is the solid phase the liquid phase and the gaseous phase and you must know the conversion of one phase to another like the time for the conversion of one phase to another for example from liquid to solid phase is called freezing right and from solid to liquid is called melting for example now from liquid to gaseous is called evaporation or boiling and also from solid directly to the gaseous form is what we call sublimation even from gaseous to liquid form is what we call condensation so you need to know the name of all of these processes and what they actually mean also you need to know different separation techniques and the type of substances that we separate with those techniques for example you need to know techniques like filtration, you need to know techniques like sieving, you need to know techniques like decantation, you need to know techniques like fractional distillation, you need to know techniques like distillation, and so on and so forth. You need to know the differences between these separation techniques, because even Jam likes asking questions on these separation techniques, and even chromatography. Chromatography is also a separation technique, so don't forget that, right? Also, these particular two separation techniques are very close, distillation and fractional distillation. Jam likes asking questions on these two separation techniques. For distillation, it is actually the difference in boiling points of liquids that determine the separation of these liquids. Also, fractional distillation is also depending on the boiling point. But the difference is that in fractional distillation, the boiling points of the liquids that needs to be separated are closer together than in distillation. While in distillation, in distillation, the boiling point of the compound that needs to be separated or the liquids that need to be separated are further apart. You understand? Fractional distillation is mostly used in crude, crude oil, like the extraction of different substituents in crude oil, like petrol, diesel, oil, and so on and so forth. So let us move to the second topic. So the next topic is nature of molecules. In these topics, you need to have a good knowledge of elements, ions, and some others. You need to know that ions are elements that have either lost or gained electrons. You need to know the difference between cations and anions. Those are the two types of ions that we have. Cations are positive ions and anions are negative ions, right? Cations have lost electron, while anions have gained electron. Also, you need to have a good knowledge of valency, which means that valency is the combining power of elements. And also, you need to know the octet rule and the duplex rule. You need to know the two n square rule, which tells us the amount of electrons or the maximum number of electrons that can be in a particular shell. Right? Also, you need to have a good knowledge of the balancing of chemical equations. I've seen a couple of questions on balancing of chemical equations, so in JAM exam, so you should not miss out on that. Also, you should have a good knowledge of the symbols of elements. At least, try to know the first 20 elements in the periodic table from hydrogen to calcium. 
right? So let me give you guys an example. In sodium chloride, which is NaCl, you need to know that the oxidation number of sodium in sodium chloride is plus one, right? And the oxidation number of chlorine in sodium chloride is minus one. That means that the bond that is between them is an ionic or an electrovalent bond, which means that sodium is donating one electron to chlorine, and chlorine is accepting one electron. That is why the charge of chlorine is minus one. I believe this is very simple. So let us move to the next topic. The next topic is atomic structure and chemical bonding. Under this topic, you need to know about protons, electrons, and neutrons. You need to know that the proton is determinant of the atomic number of an element. The proton tells us the atomic number of an element, right? And you need to know about the protons and the neutrons that they are in the nucleus of an atom, right? And you need to know that the electrons is, are always on the shells. And you need to know the people that discovered protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? Also, you need to know about isotopes, right? And you need to know that electrons are what constitutes to the chemical properties of an element. The electrons in the shell of an atom are what tells us the type of a bonding that that particular element will form with other elements. Also, you need to learn about electronic configuration. You need to learn about isotopy, right? Also, you need to learn about different types of chemical bonding. Bonding like ionic bonding or electrovalent bonding. This is a type of a bonding where electrons are completely transferred from one atom to another. Also, covalent bonding, where electrons are shared between the participating atom. Also, coordinate covalent bonding and even metallic bonding, van der Waal forces, hydrogen bonding, and so on and so forth. Under this topic, you see questions on stoichiometry which tells us the relationship between mass slash volume relationships. So don't miss out on that. So let us move to the next topic. If you have been gaining from this video so far, the best way to appreciate it is just by liking, commenting, and subscribing to this particular YouTube channel. And don't forget to share this particular video with your friends that are also taking the JAM exam. I will also be making videos like this, talking about the most repeated topics for other subjects too like physics, biology, mathematics, and use of English, if you guys want it. The next topic is periodic table and periodicity. Under this topic, you need to know what the periodic table is, and you need to know that elements are arranged in the periodic table in order of their atomic numbers. You need to know about groups and periods. You need to know that groups are the vertical arrangement of elements, while periods are the horizontal arrangement of elements on the periodic table. You need to know that elements that belong to the same group have the same chemical characteristics. And they have the same number of valence electrons. When I say valence electrons, I mean electrons that are in the outermost shell. And you need to know that elements that belong to the same period have the same amount of shells, right? Also, you need to know the special names of different groups in the periodic table. In the periodic table, we have 18 groups, but we have eight main groups, and we have seven periods, right? So you need to know the names or the special names of these particular groups. Like group one is alkali metals group 2, alkaline earth metals, also, and so on and so forth. You need to learn about the transition metals, and you also need to learn about the special characteristics of the transition metals. Another thing you should not miss out on on the periodic table, and Jam likes asking this thing, is the periodic trends on the periodic table. The atomic radius, something like electronegativity, electropositivity, electron affinity, and so on and so forth. Try to learn these trends across the periods and down the groups. So that is that for periodic table. Let us move to the next topic. The next topic is acid, base, and salt. Under this topic, you should be ready for questions on the pH scale. You should know that on the pH scale, the pH scale starts from 0 to 14. And you should know that the pH scale, 7 means neutrality. From 0 to 6.9 or tending towards 7 is acidity, right? And from 7 or 7.1 to 14 shows alkalinity. As you move towards 14, your alkalinity will increase. But as you move towards 0 from 7, your acidity will increase. Don't forget that. You should also know about acid, the definition of acid, the definition of base, and the definition of salt. You should know that acids are substances that produces only hydrogen ion or hydronium ion when dissolved in water. And you should know that bases are substances that produces only hydroxy ion when dissolved in water. Right? So you should also know the types of acid. You should also know also weak acid and strong acid. You should know that strong acid ionizes completely in water. Why weak acid ionizes partially in water? The same goes for the bases too. The weak base and the strong base. Also, you should learn about different types of salts. You know, we have the simple salts or the neutral salts. We have the double salts. We have the complex salts. We have the acidic salts and even basic salts. 
you should know the difference between all of these sorts all right also you should learn about titration you should learn about the chemical apparatuses that we use in titration and also you should learn solvents on titration that's the quantitative analysis you should learn formula on the quantitative analysis formula like CAVA over NA equals CBVB over NB showing the relationship between concentration volume and number of moles of acid and bases used in a titration so this is the formula and sure you can use this formula to solve questions of titration under this topic don't forget about neutralization reaction know that neutralization reaction is the reaction between an acid and a base to produce salt and water so that is all for acid and base let us move to the next topic the next topic is gas loss and kinetic theory of matter under this particular topic don't forget to know laws like Boyce law charles law gay-lussac law avogadro's law Graham's law that is shown and some others and ensure that you know the formulae of these particular laws don't mix them up and ensure that you know how to solve questions on these particular laws if you are having issues with solving some gas loss questions you can check my youtube page here i have uploaded some videos on solving questions on gas laws also you need to know the ideal gas law which the formula is pv is equal to nrt also you should know that the kinetic theory of matter tells us about how gases move right and also you should understand the concept of diffusion effusion and also brownian motion so that is that for that let us move to the next topic another topic you must also know is nuclear chemistry in nuclear chemistry you need to be familiar with radioactivity isotopes nuclear reactions and their applications also you need to be familiar with alpha particle beta particle and even gamma particle and also you need to be familiar with their penetration power and ionizing power also you need to know their uses and application in medicine and other industries you also need to study calculations on half-life as jam usually like asking questions on calculations concerning half-life there's a particular popular formula for half-life that jam likes asking questions on and the formula is half-life is equal to 0.693 over lambda where lambda is the decay constant of that particular element and sure you know this formula because you can see questions on it in your jam exam half-life is equal to 0.693 over lambda where lambda is the decay constant of that particular element and lambda will be given to you in the question the next topic is solubility and water under this topic ensure that you know calculations and how to solve all of these calculations on solubility also know the solubility curve and also know the conditions that affect the solubility of a substance like temperature and pressure and also under this topic ensure that you understand the concept of saturation super saturation and unsaturation jam can also ask you questions on water hardness and how water hardness can be removed by boiling or ions exchange so that is that for solubility let's move to the next topic the next topic is electrolysis under electrolysis you must ensure that you understand the meaning of electrolysis electrolytes electrodes and even understand the faraday's laws of electrolysis also you must understand the principle of electroplating for example electroplating a spoon with silver and so on you must also learn the extraction of different metals using electrolysis right also you can also learn the production of different gases like hydrogen gas and chlorine gas using electrolysis you must try to learn the electrochemical series which is the electropositivity series and the electronegativity series i have a song which i used to memorize the electrochemical series during my time when i was preparing for jump if you want me to teach you that song let me know in the comments and i'll make a video about that song so that you will not be able to forget your electrochemical series again so jam likes asking questions on the movement of ions during electrolysis all of these things are things you need to know about electrolysis before you take blood your jam exam so that is that for electrolysis so the next topic you need to know is oxidation and reduction the first thing you need to know about oxidation and reduction is the different definitions of oxidation and reduction depending on different things for example oxidation has a definition of electron transfer it has a definition on oxygen gain and oxygen loss it has a definition on hydrogen loss and hydrogen gain it even has a definition on increase and decrease in oxidation number also a definition on the gain and loss of electronegative elements so don't forget this for example oxidation is the loss of electron why reduction is the gain of electron oxidation is the gain of oxygen why reduction is the loss of oxygen oxidation is the loss of hydrogen why reduction is the gain of hydrogen so definitions like this you must ensure to know them because you can be asked in your jam exam also you must learn about oxidation number and how to calculate the oxidation number of elements in compounds also you must learn about redox reactions and how to balance redox reaction either in an acidic medium neutral medium or a basic medium 
These are things that JAM can ask you. Also, you must learn to identify the oxidizing agent, reducing agent, reduced entity, and the oxidized entity in an equation. All of these things are things that JAM can ask you in your JAM exam. So ensure that you know them. That is that for oxidation and reduction. Let us move to the next topic. The next topic is organic chemistry. We all know that organic chemistry is a very broad topic. But JAM likes asking questions on this particular part I'm about to mention. JAM focuses on homologous series, functional groups, and even isomers. Yes, you should try to know things about alkane series, alkene series, alkyne series, alkanol series, alkanal series, the carboxylic acid or the alkanoic acids, the esters, the ethers, the ketones, or the haldehydes. If you are able to know these functional groups and how to name them, I mean the IUPAC nomenclature. Also, know the meaning of IUPAC. We all know that IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. You can be asked in your JAM exam, right? You must know how to identify the structural formula of different organic compounds, right? Also, don't forget to know the general formula of different homologous series. For example, the general formula for the alkane homologous series is CnH2n plus 2. For alkene, CnH2n, right? For alkyne, CnH2n minus 2, right? For alkanol, it is C or ROH. For alkanol, it is ROH and so on and so forth. You should learn reactions like saponification and even esterification. And also know the meaning of these reactions. For example, esterification reaction is the reaction between a carboxylic acid or an alkanoic acid and an alkanol to produce an ester and water only. Also, you must know that the reverse reaction of an esterification reaction is what we call hydrolysis reaction. So all of these things are things you should know. You should also learn reactions like addition reaction, substitution reaction, combustion reaction of organic compounds. So all of these things are things you must learn about organic chemistry if you don't want to fail your jam exam. Also, if you are having issues with organic chemistry or you want to know better in organic chemistry, I have made a very detailed video here on my YouTube channel. The video is one hour, 20 minutes long. I have the part one and I also have the part two. And I focused mainly on organic chemistry. If you watch that video, I don't think you are going to have any issues with organic chemistry anymore. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video if you have been gaining things so far. So let us move to the next topic. Another topic you also need to know is the non-metals. Under this particular topic, Jam likes asking questions on the uses and the preparation of gases or non-metals like oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and carbon. And especially carbon, Jam likes asking questions on carbon. Questions about the allotropes of carbon, that's graphite, diamond, and even the fullerenes, right? Don't forget all of these things. Also, Jam likes asking questions on the oxides of these non-metals, like CO2, SO2, and so on and so forth. For the allotropes of carbon, don't forget to learn about their uses and their unique properties because Jam likes asking questions about these things. So that is that for non-metals. Let us move to the next topic. So the next topic is metals and alloys. On this topic, you must learn the properties of different metals and how different alloys like brass, bronze, stainless steel are formed. You must know that brass is an alloy of copper and zinc. And you must know that bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. Jam likes asking this question. Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc don't forget that means that brass is made from copper and zinc right and bronze is made from copper and tin don't forget that because jam likes asking questions on this particular alloy so jam can also ask questions on the reduction of metallic oxides using carbon or even electrolysis also they can also ask questions on the prevention of corrosion through using galvanization or even using painting all of these things are things you need to know about metals and alloys. And this is the last topic for the day. You know, you can also decide to read all of the jam syllabus, right? But ensure that you finish reading all of these topics I have mentioned in this video. I believe you have learned something from this video. If you want me to make this type of videos of the most repeated topics for other subjects like physics, mathematics, biology, and use of English, you can let me know in the comments and I'll make the video for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.